Ом, сахана вавату, сахано бунакту, сахавирям карававахай, те час вина вадхи тамасту, мавет вишаваха и ум, шанти, 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 ом, пис, 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 ом, болос от гуру Шивананда Махараджаки, джай, ом, болос Шри Суами Вишну Девананда Махараджаки, джай. Ом Наму Нараяна, welcome, sweet practitioner. This is Mahalakshmi with one ounce practice, and today we practice generosity at times of adversity, at times when we might be challenged uh, to share with others when we feel that we don't have much for ourselves or for our, for our loved ones, at times when negative thoughts and emotions come up in our mind and cause us to shrink and to be close-hearted instead of open-hearted and generous and that could be because of past impressions or because of uh, people who are negative around us and that negativity rubs on us or it might be because uh, suddenly something happens a situation appears before us and it causes these negative thoughts and emotions to come up and One of these situations is the time of death. Um, This is very uncomfortable and fearful topic that we rarely speak about. But it is something natural and uh, something that the body goes through uh, for sure as as it, it is born and it will perish. But our true self, our our nature is not the body. We are pure consciousness and that has never been born and it will never die. It is only the body that takes the energies, the five elements and gets transformed, gets manifested and born and then gets dissolved and transformed into, back into the elements and to other manifestations of these elements and energy. So the generosity at time of death, uh, Swami Shimananda shares that it is different than the generosity during lifetime. He says, the former generosity during lifetime proceeds from real liberality and benevolence. The latter generosity at the time of death from pride and fear. And it is very common that we want to be generous at the time of death because we feel very successful and we feel that we have many blessings and we want to show those blessings to those around us and we want them to remember us like that. So we share because of our own uh, perception of how we want to be remembered, of, of how we want others to see us, to perceive us. And sometimes when it is from a place of fear, then it is because we want them to love us even after we are gone. Or we may want to be remembered as a generous person. And and because of fear, we are realizing that the material possessions that we have, the relationships that we've built, everything in this in this lifetime that we've worked for and we've gained, is perishable and it, it will not bring us to immortality or to experience Im- immortality because we are immortal our true nature is immortal but we don't have that understanding and that realization of that immortality so Shivananda shares that munificent gift is still vast in its amount regardless of the motive. So even if we are giving because of pride or fear or any other selfish agenda that we may have on our mind as a reason for our generosity, it doesn't matter. The motive is is put aside because the gift is the gift. But the, the subtle energy does carry through to the one who receives the gift. And if the gift comes from a place of liberality and benevolence, that energy will carry through. If it comes from pride and fear, that will also carry through. So there are a couple of ways where we can overcome these negative feelings, negative thoughts and emotions, selfish desires that we may have on our mind. 
as we try to be generous at times of adversity. And one of these methods to overcome the challenging times that causes us to shrink and allow us to be generous, truly generous, generosity that comes from benevolence, is to remember that our own self, our true nature, is the same nature of the person that is challenging us, that person that is needing us to share whatever we have, the little that we have, um, that person that may wish to hurt us or who have hurt us. And that same person, their own nature is the same nature as our own self. So when we give to them, whether it's a physical material thing or a prayer, a well-wishing, a thought of caring, it is being generous, caring and loving to our own self. This is one way to practice generosity when we are challenged, when we're not seeing clearly and when we are blinded by negativity and fear. Another method that we can apply in challenging times is to look for the silver lining, to look for the blessing in disguise. And sometimes... uh, It might be hard to apply our intellect in the situation because these thoughts and emotions are very powerful and they can be very overwhelming. And employing the intellect requires our mind to be calm and peaceful in order to do the proper judgment. So we do meditate. It's great if we can meditate before we take any decisions or any actions towards the other person or uh, whatever the situation asks for but in our meditation which we'll practice later it is best to look for that silver lining to, to look for the positive quality that this opportunity is presenting before us to practice and if it is hard for us to find it because we're overwhelmed then A shortcut, um, kind of like a cheat sheet if you wish, is to practice the opposite. So for example, if someone is causing us to be fearful, we practice courage. If someone is causing us anxiety, this is also a, a type of fear, so we practice courage. If someone irritates us, then this is an opportunity to practice patience. And so on, with whatever negative quality arises within us, whatever negative thought or emotion arises within us, we find the positive opposite quality and we try to apply it in the given situation. And last but not least, as a third method that we can apply in challenging times that will allow us to be generous and open-hearted and kind and loving to others and ourselves, is to get inspired by the lives of our idols, of our heroes, of our heroines, of the people that we look up to, of saints and sages, because everyone has challenges in their life and they overcome them. And by their example of overcoming their challenges, we get the inspiration that we too can overcome our challenges by seeing their illuminous example of being generous or being kind and caring and loving we are able to bring these qualities into our mind and into our life and in a separate practice i will share a tremendously inspiring story of swami shivananda's a silent and how he uh, practiced generosity and kindness and care and loving to that person who tried to physically hurt him. But for today's practice, we will focus on seeing the silver lining, seeing the positive opposite quality in the challenge, and through our meditation, try to further plant them in our heart 
So when the time comes, or if this is if the time is now of a challenge and of adversity, to be able to apply them in our own life. So let's sit comfortably with our spine up straight. If you're sitting on your yoga mat in a cross-legged position, make sure that the hips are elevated to be easy on the knees. The hands can be in chin mudra, the thumb and the index finger touching together, or they can be in right palm on the top of the left one, open up towards the ceiling or the sky. If you feel comfortable, close your eyes and we'll start with two deep breaths. Inhale, abdomen, rib cage, and chest expand. And exhale, abdomen, rib cage, and chest relax. Inhale deeply, expand the lungs, the abdomen. And relax the chest, the lungs, the abdomen. We'll continue with rhythmical breathing. We'll inhale for the count of four and we will exhale for the count of four. It will help us balance the mind and calm the mind so we can be present and peaceful throughout the meditation. As you feel ready, inhale for four. Om one, om two, om three, om four, and exhale om one, om two, om three, om four. Inhale om one, om two, om three, om four, and exhale om one, om two, om three, om four. Inhale om one, om two, om three, om four, and exhale om one, om two, om three, om four. Inhale on one, on two, on three, on four, and exhale on one, on two, on three, on four. Inhale on one, on two, on three, on four, and exhale on one, on two, on three, on four. Inhale on one, on two, on three, on four, and exhale on one, on two, on three, on four. Inhale on one, on two, on three, on four, and exhale on one, on two, on three, on four. One last time, inhale on one, on two, on three, on four, and exhale on one, on two, on three, on four. Continue with the rhythmical breathing on your own. Continue to focus on the breath. Notice how the chest and the abdomen expand and relax. Let's bring the centering thought of today's meditation that we will practice the opposite positive quality that the, the current challenge presents to us as the opportunity for us to grow and evolve. Let's ask ourselves what virtue is this situation prompting me to practice? What virtue is this situation prompting me to practice? Ask yourself mentally and listen. Listen with your heart. Listen with your soul. What is it trying to tell you? What 
is the opportunity to grow in this challenging time. And the answer may come to you in your meditation, in your daily life, may come to you through another person. Be open and look for the subtleties in your day, the subtle hints that prompt you to the answer. Mentally repeat to yourself, I see my own self in the other. I see my own, my true self in the other. By giving to them, I give to myself. By giving to them, I give to myself. Repeat it a few times to yourself quietly. I see my true self in the other. By giving to them, I give to myself. Imagine the white dove of generosity with its two wings of liberality and benevolence flying high, flying graciously, flying towards you and it comes to you and sings its beautiful song of blessings and prayers. It shows you the blessing in disguise. And as these blessings are revealed to you, you open your heart and wholeheartedly, with the best intentions in mind, you send prayers and thoughts of welfare to those who present that challenge to you. Take a moment and send them the prayers and thoughts of welfare. Say to them, thank you for presenting me with this challenge so I can see the blessing and go beyond it. Thank you for presenting me with this challenge and allowing me to see the blessing so I can overcome it and go beyond it. Feel your heart feel with kindness for yourself and for the other person. Feel your heart expanding and beating with warmth and kindness.
We'll close our practice with firm resolve and determination of the mind to apply these affirmations throughout the day. Mentally repeat to yourself, I am generous with my positive thoughts, kind words and caring actions to those who present this challenge. I am generous with my positive thoughts, kind words and caring actions to those who present this challenge. I am generous with my positive thoughts, kind words and caring actions towards those who present this challenge. I see the silver lining and the blessing in disguise. I see the silver lining and the blessing in disguise. I give freely and munificently. I give freely and munificently. I give freely and munificently. Continue to repeat mentally to yourself. I am generous with my good thoughts, kind words and positive actions those who present this challenge. I give freely and munificently. As you feel comfortable, open your eyes if they were closed. Well done, my friend. Well done. What a beautiful practice. Thank you for meditating with me. Remember to reflect on your day, the situations that you're able to apply, the teachings from today. I wish you a blessed rest of your day. Om Namo Narayanaya.